morning, everyone. And uh, a warm welcome to all the esteemed panelists. And thank you for joining and agreeing to share your insights and learnings on this very important topic. And uh, just to start, I was uh, a few weeks back, I was in a B school. And I conducted a live, quick online survey among the students and asked them to respond uh, from the perspective of a consumer. And what I asked them, I asked them three questions that how many of you were or are in favor of rising consumer privacy? Uh, over 90% of the students voted in favor. The next question was how many of you will be willing to share your data to a brand, right? And 74% said they won't. The third question was how many of you would be willing or want brands to talk to you in a personalized manner, and 85% were in favor. So there you see, while consumers want privacy and personalization at the same time, they're not willing to share data, and that's the challenge that the marketeers today are facing, and would face increasingly going forward. Happy to have a wide representation of uh, varied sectors here today, and would like to see how they approach personalization and the challenges that face and what has been their winning strategies all the way. Uh, Vidya, thank you for joining and may I start with you. Right. Uh, when I came across, I was looking at Mondelez and researching, I came across this statement, right, uh, which says we are a house of incredible brands providing people with the right snack or the right moment made the right way. So I see there is an element of personalization inherent in the statement itself. So can you please help us know, like, how do you approach personalization? Because the category that you are in, most of the buying happens offline, right? And if you can say this from the point of view from both existing as well as prospecting customers that you reach out to. Uh, thanks for that question, uh, Anil. And I think uh, the reference that you made to the survey right at the beginning is is pretty much my answer, right? So, uh, you know, consumers today are looking at hyper-personalized experiences. Uh, they are always on, uh, you know, they're looking for uh, uh, content all the time. When they're traveling, there is no prime time anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and there are multiple uh, screens, uh, multiple forums where they're looking for information. And as a brand, if I'm not relevant to the consumer at the moment where he's seeking out uh, right. you know, a proposition that I can offer best, then I'm not doing justice to, uh, you know, either his needs or what I can offer to him. And that's where our personalization philosophy comes as well, right? So uh, internally, we call it empathy at scale, which is right. to say that how do we identify moments in a consumer's life um, at the mo which is, which is, you know, contextual to him. So we're not starting from us. We're really starting from, from the point of view of what is he looking for mm -hmm. and how can I present myself to him in the most meaningful manner at that point. And therefore, uh, personalization is not about only buying and you know, what can drive sale. Right. It automatically then becomes uh, how do I impact the entire consumer journey right from the time that I can impact awareness to you know, how do right. I make him consider or her consider my brand over a set of things that he's looking for in, in, in that moment. And that's that's really how we are looking at personalization and that's pretty much nice, what we've yeah. demonstrated over sure. the years as well. So would you have any case study of personalization which is very close to your heart uh, of uh, one of your brands? I think the work that we've done uh, during Diwali over the last couple of years uh, truly stands yes. out as, a, as, as, as something that is universally acknowledged as you know, a great example of personalization. It's close to, a, close to my heart as an employee of Mondelez because it mm -hmm. makes me feel very proud that here is an occasion where you know you want to bring a happiness in everyone's lives uh, uh, that you are a part of because Diwali is a festival like that. Uh, mm. And here's a brand, uh, Cadbury Celebrations, which is about invoking that moment of generosity. Uh, and given the COVID context, given that you know people were looking for that spark of uh, inspiration or joy in their yes. lives, given how they've suffered. Uh, I think I think the fact that we were able to play the role of a catalyst by bringing a star like Shah Rukh Khan mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to a piece of comms that they can truly call their own 
Uh, I, I don't think uh, anything that we've done really surpassed that from, from the point of view of saying that how could we do really intimate personalization but do it at a scale which was yeah. which is not something that obviously we anticipated initially, but then it took a life. Definitely, that life was of its own. that was iconic, uh, Vidya. I must say, uh, Sangeet, right? Uh, so, housing.com. When I read about it, of course, it's one of the yep. most innovative uh, real estate portal, right? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you handle uh, multiple stakeholders. You have uh, builders, you have brokers, you have property owners people flocking to your site and apps for, say, rent, buying a plot of land. Also, uh, for a lot of allied services that you have on your site. Yeah. How do you make sure that you keep the aspect of personalization alive and kicking with all these different kinds of stakeholders right, at your end? Got it, sure. No, Anil, I think that's, that's definitely a challenge for us uh, because there's, there's just so many stakeholders. There's buyers, renters. Uh, mm. On the other side, there are sellers, agents, homeowners directly now interacting yeah. on the platform. Uh, so for us, and then again, the, it, another complexity that gets added is, uh, if you look at housing.com, real estate, you maybe buy a house once in your lifetime, right? Most of us. Uh, rentals every two, three years on average. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very short time period where we have to personalize within those three to six months for the user. Exactly. Um, so so our, our, this multi-stakeholder arrangement, we have started looking at this as an opportunity now. Mm -hmm. uh, because what's happened is, instead of, in addition to, I would say, uh, one side browsing plat uh, pattern, let's say, from, from the consumers, we also have started looking at the interactions now. So mm -hmm. let's say if a buyer is connecting with the seller, mm -hmm. we also have started taking feedback, learning what's going on, right. and then using that to improve the experience going forward. Okay. So, so having multiple stakeholders on the same platform, mm -hmm. Is, is it actually an opportunity? Because we know, know exactly what the user is thinking through the interaction that they had on the platform. Nice. That's, so any, any, anything that, uh, any case study or any personalization project that you are very uh, fond of that you can speak about? Sure. So our, our approach to personalization, I mean, so, so we, we look at multiple touch points, Sanil. Uh, mm -hmm. So our idea is to keep making those incremental improvements across the journey which eventually adds up to a, 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 an overall delight factor for the user. Uh, so mm -hmm. one of the recent things that, that our team worked on was around, uh, so when you're looking for a home, right, uh, it's, it's, it's a complex journey. So you're looking at multiple neighborhoods, you're looking yeah. at multiple societies. Uh, so, so there are always mul mu multiple intents that's going on, right, in your mind. Uh, as a platform, a lot of personalization you would see is always based on the recent search you always do, right? You yeah. start off from where you left off. For us, it's, 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 as I mentioned, it's multiple intent. Hmm. So one interesting experiment we did was using the explicit data uh, uh, that the user was sharing with us, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the implicit data, right? As I mentioned, through interactions and everything, we were able to classify int multiple intents. And okay. when the user is coming back, right? We, we saw a lot of people dropping off because, they, right. because, because what happens is what, what you were searching on Monday, and by the time you come back to us on Thursday, a lot of things have happened offline. So what you are looking is not maybe what you're looking today, hmm. right? It evolves as you move forward. So what we started doing was we started showcasing multiple uh, searches that you can do in parallel, mm -hmm. right? So that, that, that fundamentally was able to change the way the person is looking rather than just one intent at a time. Uh, and in terms of results also, uh, we, we saw about 15 to 17 percent uptick in our engagement numbers on the platform. So that, that would be the normal approach that you must be following even today, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's something yeah. Yeah. nice. So Sachin, uh, uh, Pesa Bazaar, right, is, is the number one uh, consumer credit marketplace we were just discussing uh, off stage, right? And uh, it's also uh, a category or a sector where data security and uh, privacy, I mean, the restrictions are a lot more than what we have in other sectors. How do you make sure that uh, you are able to look into the aspect of personalization, right, uh, for all your existing customers as well as new customers who are flocking to your sites, site and app, right? Uh, sure. So uh, it's it's true that uh, BFSI is imposed with a lot of restrictions, uh, which are not there in other industries, right? Because uh, money matters are uh, yeah uh, very delicate. 
and uh, these these restrictions are critical to safeguard the interest of you know consumers especially the naive ones mm -hmm. so i can i can't complain about that but whatever data uh, uh, we have we we try to work with that uh, as far as personalization is concerned there are obviously there are regular ones like personalizing communication personalizing uh, content personalizing journeys right. but one thing which i uh, would uh, like to you know uh, uh, comment on here and and i'm really proud of uh, people come to us when they are in need right mm -hmm. uh, people want a loan they nobody wants a loan uh, some people need loans right, right. and unfortunately if 100 people uh, apply for a loan more than 60 got rejected uh, because of one or uh, the other Various factor, reasons, right? yeah. so uh, so you know when they come to us they need that loan urgently and if we can personalize that offering and improve their chances of approval improve their chances of uh, you know mm -hmm. getting that product that would be uh, the uh, the biggest customer delight for us uh, and that's what we do uh, so we have uh, various data points available to us be it our existing customers or the new customers we have credit score data we have uh, you know uh, their journeys on our website right. whatever products they have consumed the channels etc cetera, etc cetera. there are some third party data as well uh, basis that data we try to uh, give him the best product mm -hmm. uh, while, while the best might not be with the lowest interest rate, like right. uh, I was mentioning, because you know yeah. people have people tend to have this tendency when they come to a lending platform, they often choose the product where the interest rate is the lowest because they don't want to pay a, a higher EMI. But that might not be the right product for you because uh, you know that th that bank basis is civil score and all and that. Right? If you yeah. get rejected once, your chances suppose you had a better chance in bank B. Uh, of, of getting that product, but because bank A rejected you, your chance chance will become bleaker uh, even uh, on the bank B. So it's very crucial. It's it's uh, and, and it uh, and we do it on the fly. When people come onto mm. our platform, they give us some details, and we you know uh, publish uh, those quotes, uh, those options. We try uh, to give him the best offer. That that's a good insight for all of us. Maybe we Thanks, shouldn't be thanks. checking our civil scores or. Just going for the it's, banks, it's, it's very important. The lowest interest rate, right? Yeah. yeah, great. So, Sachin, what what kind of tools or platforms do you use uh, currently, or maybe from a future perspective, right? The the kind the way personalization is evolving. Uh, you have a focus on certain tools or platforms that you use. Yeah. See, it's it's not how good your bat is. Uh, it's how mm. well you have practiced your shot, right? Uh, obviously, uh, the bat will help. But uh, you know the uh, so similarly here uh, the tool is not important. There mm. are multiple tools in the market, and all uh, I would say most of them are equal, uh, e right. equally competent. Right? You uh, would have plus and minuses everywhere, but uh, it's uh, it's within your own organization, right? Mm -hmm. How you treat the data before you going for uh, for a tool, you there is a lot of work needs to be done exactly at your yeah. end before you even go out and start you know looking for a tool there has to be a data unification exercise exactly uh, the moment of truth should be the same for mm. uh, you know every uh, department be it the product or marketing or, or service right if it's not happening uh, whether you take uh, the best tool in the world or you take the worst one the result would be the same uh, having said that so so uh, my advice is to first you know do uh, your uh, your exercise back at home mm -hmm. uh, try to sanitize your data get everything at one place make it usable and then then go out uh, and search for a tool as long as tool is concerned what we are using we have been using uh, an in-house tool for quite some time now uh, for personalization for automation everything now since our scale is bigger we have recently signed up with salesforce uh, okay. marketing cloud and cdp and mm -hmm. we are in process of implementing that uh, so great i hope nice to hear that so uh, Ashish, coming to you, I think you represent one of the youngest organization on the stage now, right? Uh, it started in 2018, Bharat Pay, right? And uh, you gave us our first uh, UPI uh, transaction, uh, UPI interoperable QR code. You are, you have 80 lakh plus uh, merchants on board, and uh, you're pres processing 18 crores UPI transactions per month, maybe that might have gone up from my last analysis, but you are in a different domain altogether where you are having to deal with merchants more, that is more on the B2B side, right? Uh, you have an element of consumers as well uh, on the uh, 
uh, book now, yeah, postpaid. Uh, but how do you then look at the aspect of personalization? It's more from a B2B perspective, right? And, and a B2C perspective here. Uh, see, personalization for uh, uh, fintech or a BFSI kind of clients, right? Like uh, Sachin rightly pointed out, uh, there are rules and regulations around it, right? So yeah. it becomes tricky for two reasons. One is obviously you are handling with money, right? Uh, money is uh, very dear to people, right? So you can't be goofing up around that. Uh, the second reason uh, is basically, so, so if you think about any company, let's say uh, a normal consumer company, right? Uh, the extent to which they will do personalization will depend upon uh, how much capability they have or what is their internal thesis around personalization, right? But uh, in case of uh, uh, a fintech company, right, it's also governed with uh, the rules and regulations of the regulator, yeah, yeah. right? So just to give you an example, uh, uh, fintech companies are not allowed to store their data with servers outside of India, mm. right? So that's an important critical piece when you select your partners, right? So uh, personalization becomes slightly difficult for us. Uh, one of the other reason it becomes uh, slightly tricky for a company like Bharat Pay is because a uh, lot of things don't happen actually uh, inside your digital environment, right? Mm -hmm. So once you, let's say, when you transact, uh, on any merchant using yeah. the Bharat Pay QR, that transaction is actually happening offline, right? So stitching that offline transaction to the online journey is something which needs to be done. So we extensive, we as a company use extensively uh, what is called in technical parlance, uh, server to server integrations, right. right? So basically pulling your f offline data in real time to mm -hmm. your online world so that you can use that to basically uh, cater uh, experiences on the right. app, right? It's also true for experiences, it's also true for uh, what communications you send to the merchants or consumers Marketing for that matter. automation kind right. of right. messages right. and right. emails. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, on that, so is there any specific Martech tools that, uh, what are the tools that you are using or proposed to use maybe? Uh, so, uh, with respect to tools, again, I would say I agree with uh, what Sachin was saying earlier. So tool is just an implementation, right? Uh, the larger buy-in needs to come uh, from your organization, right? So mm -hmm. uh, whenever you, let's say, take up anything, let's say personalization, right? You should not take it up just because you heard in an event, right? right. So you'll have to think about it, whether it's really important for your customers, right? Mm -hmm. And second, uh, what kind of business impact are you able to create out of it? Right. Sure. So maybe you do a smaller experiment and try to see what kind of impact it has. If it has a uh, real impact, let's say on the uh, bottom line of the company or the top line of the company, mm -hmm. then obviously it becomes a lot easier to get uh, uh, sponsorship inside, right? Because otherwise what happens is all these kind of projects, they fall apart. Uh, if you don't have internal sponsorship from your, let's say, top management. Uh, so I think uh, setting up uh, requires use of, uh, as in, you should set up what's the real business impact you are trying to bring in once you do something, right? So we, for example, use uh, a tool called CleverTap, which helps us personalize a lot of communications, a lot of app right. experiences for us. And uh, website product as such, we don't have a website presence. It's an app-only product, both for Bharat Pay as well as PostPay. Sure. Yeah. No, so I think one thing is coming out from both Sachin and you is that get your house in order yeah, yeah. Uh, with respect to your data before you start looking out for various tools and platforms, so, right? So one more thing yeah. uh, uh, Ashish rightly mentioned, uh, you know, most of the time what happens, uh, these tools and these use cases are usually pushed by one department. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. So either marketing who is, uh, you know, uh, pushing the management for uh, an automation tool or a personalization right. tool while service has no idea, product has no idea. And when they implement it, marketing implements one tool, you know, uh, service comes up with a different tool that, okay, we have these use cases, these use cases can't be solved by this tool, mm. we need another tool, that product okay. comes up, okay, these tools do not have this uh, capability. So, you know, uh, before we go out uh, in, in hunting of a tool, first we need to uh, get every department on the same page, right. uh, write down all use cases, why, uh, why do we need it, and uh, what are the use cases we would be using that tool for? 
and and just evaluate uh, the importance and criticality of all uh, those use cases we do not have to go out and solve every use case under the right. sun we just need to figure out what all cases are important for your organization exactly. for your consumers find those use cases are if we are able to fi uh, you know solve five or six use cases within the organization that will be a good success but it has to be uh, at one go a lot of these tools actually require uh, as in uh, tech and product bandwidth right exactly. so if you don't get that it is of no good right yeah. Yeah. yeah so on that use case is fine segue uh, coming to you vidya right uh, professor byron in his book how brands grow he is little uh, against say using hyper targeting especially with respect to cpg use case or cpg category how do you do you think personalization uh, is only a lower funnel met metric and needs to be looked differently uh, i think uh, fundamentally all of us are you know all of us in the cpg industry are still trying to drive penetration because yeah. most of the categories that we operate in uh, india would be you know vastly under penetrated and there's headroom to grow and yeah. and stuff so our objective continues to be penetration and to that extent i think uh, most of us are aligned to the laws of growth philosophy that byron sharp speaks about mm. and i think personalization is not about at least in our case which is very different from yeah. you know, some of my uh, uh, fellow panelists here is that we are still going to go to a very large audience and yes. and a lot of them are going to be light users or in some cases you know non non users what we are trying to do through personalization is to really uh, you know personalize the communication uh, in a way that still speaks to our brand idea and our proposition mm -hmm. but in a in a in a manner that's fit to the platform so you know if i'm looking at content on a uh, on on google versus youtube versus versus facebook yeah. uh, the sheer diversity of the platforms means that i can't be speaking the same language yeah. um and 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 the way we uh, segment our cohorts is very different now right i mean let's say 15 years back we would have done simple demographics uh, and you probably air the same ad at prime time on your favorite serial or program that's changing now so that's yeah. that's what personalization means to us we still are going to the largest cohort i mean largest uh, universe of audience that's possible Uh, so we are not doing you know repeated targeting to one guy or mm -hmm. going after one person because in our case uh, you know while it's different in the sense that our consumers probably buy us far more frequently than a than let's say a housing consumer yeah. or a uh, or an automobile uh, but but the lifetime value etc is is very very small i mean it's it's a 5 rupees or a 10 rupees or yeah. a 20 rupee product at the end of the day uh, but we still want to be relevant to that moment so if it's 4 o'clock and if a consumer is looking for a snack i want to be present among the plethora of options that he or she is searching for mm. uh, and which means i have to you know communicate in a manner that's relevant to that moment purely because that opportunity is available right yes. now technology is enabling that and i'm going to use it so technology is not ahead of the fundamental philosophy of wanting to drive category penetration it's an enabler to that extent and that's how Got we it, yeah. we are looking at personalization right? well, I, I, as long as you are able to do mass customization and take it at scale i think it makes sense sangeet so uh, going to you is do you still do you also think that personalization and scale are like antithetical to each other and you cannot have personalization at scale i mean uh antithetical not sure i, I, would, I would rather put it in a different fashion uh, i i think this it's a big synergy between both of them personalization scale and this topic has been i mean discussed enough uh, in in the market uh, that the way we look at it uh, is is there there's, there's a circular relationship between both of them for example personalization uh, through scale i can do predictive analytics right yeah. to personalize which which i cannot do if there's no scale uh, so just to give an idea more than 1 crore people visit us every month right and that mm. scale enables us and especially predictive analytics plays a big role when it's the first visit for the user right because then mm. you at that point you actually don't know much about them right uh, and it's the other way around as well uh, through by doing such as i mentioned delightful personalized experiences on the personalization side you also start getting no scale right the user comes back and sort of the virality kicks in so i would i would, don't think antithesis I, th i think both of them are pretty linked to each other got it so ashish uh, like 
on the in the B2B space that you operate since you have already touched a little bit but do you think personalization in a B2B space should be looked at a little differently or what are the guardrails that one should be uh, uh, be, be cognizant of while doing this in a B2B environment? So uh, when we really design our marketing we don't really think about it like a B2B yeah. landscape right. So B2B for me is something when you are let's say your targetable market is say 5,000, 10,000, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then I think it more like a B2B, right? So e even in case of Bharat Pay, right, which is a merchant platform, we have more than 8 million active merchants, right? So right. 8 million as a number, you can actually uh, work on all the consumer oriented stuff, right? So right. you can actually personalize. So 8 million is a fairly big number, yeah. right? Uh, so uh, we don't really think ourselves as a uh, B2B offering, although it is a B2B offering, right? Mm -hmm. But all our marketing, all, uh, all the tools which we use to personalize, all the other things. So everything we do in marketing slash product, right? Is not geared towards B2B mindset, right? Right. And Postpay anyways is a consumer product. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Right, so if I just uh, come to all of you and like to, if I want you to define say personalization in two, three words or rather personalization leads to what, uh, Sangeet, if you can. Uh, I would put it delightful experiences. That's, that's the focus for us. Okay, uh, Ashish, personalization leads to what if you want to. So personalization will lead to uh, better business outcomes uh, but uh, I would say you should not take it as it is you should test it yourself great yeah Sachin so uh, there is only one reason uh, why we should do personalization is uh, you know giving our consumer better experience uh, right uh, just just an example if you uh, walk into uh, any showroom right mm -hmm. so in, in, in early days when we used to go to small shops and uh, the guy there, he used to greet us with a name. Uh, or if uh, uh, I used to go with my uh, father, he used to greet my father, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Hal Chal exactly. Kushna, etc., etc. Et and then used to go about uh, regular business. That was a good experience. That was a delight. Uh, just a small example. So uh, the only genesis of uh, personalization is customer experience. Very nice. Yeah, I think that's the, yeah, Vidya. I think for me, it's it's just build, you know, it enables to build sustainable long-term consumer relationships. I mean, the relationship that a brand like ours, where I mean, mm -hmm. we we are not even we are discrete category. We don't. I mean, a lot of people won't find the need to consume us. For us to be able to build a sustainable long-term relationship, I, I, personalization is a great tool. It's not the only tool Definitely, that somebody yeah, mentioned, yeah, of course. but I think it's a great tool. No, I think as Sachin rightly said, so we have transitioned from a say a broadcasting era to a web 2.0 to web 3.0, right? But uh, if one thing which has remained constant is the need for personalization. While you were giving an example of some yesteryears, but I think the tone, the nature, the manner in which you do personalization, that has undergone a change and it's still evolving. But uh, I think the challenge that we or all of us marketers face is of course bridging that gap between personalization and privacy. I think if the day we are able to solve that, we'll be able to, in fact, uh, enter into a new era of responsible marketing. And I think all of us are gearing towards that. I think uh, we have some time, we can have some questions from the audience if someone would like to ask to our panelists. Yeah, please. Hi, my name is Mridu and uh, my question kind of relates to the survey insights you were talking about in the beginning and uh, so there are two entities here, one is the consumer, one is the marketeers or the brands, right? Uh, at one point you're right, like customers want it, but, but how are you dealing with the trade-offs? Not to be over uh, personalized, with the, for lack of a better word, like not to be over personalized or over um, embarging in their personal territory, specifically in terms of those DNDs that customers have the right mm -hmm. to uh, on the messages or the calls. So what is the trade-off or what is the thin line that marketeers should keep in mind to not cross that line, you know? 
Uh, uh, you have this question specific to somebody or anybody? It's generally panelist? a question because we're talking about that topic. Yeah. So any of the uh, so, panelists. So she's maybe. asking. So what is the line which differentiates uh, between privacy and personalization? How? much do you want to enter into that zone of personalization? And primarily, do you keep that in, how do you keep that in mind? If you can give some examples, if you uh, intentionally keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, you know, unlike uh, some, of my, some of the other industries where, uh, you know, data is, is, is naturally volunteered by the consumer because they want to uh, you know, you make use of the service. Uh, in our case, a lot of times it's through promotions and activations where, you know, consumers would have volunteered to give that information. And a lot of times they don't uh, quite realize that they've actually consented to receiving communication from us. I think there is a constant tussle between saying that are we just being privacy compliant or are we building consumer trust? Uh, and, 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 and we believe that brands which, you know, which, which, which deliver on consumer trust are likely to succeed as far as the data journey is concerned. Uh, the idea is to not spook people. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't think there is a definite SOP around how many times should you communicate, what should you communicate on. Uh, but I think you get a fair sense of, uh, uh, you know, relevance and communication coming together. So, for example, if if there is a festive period that's coming in and I know that uh, there are people who are making last minute gifting purchases, etc., a, a gifting comms or a gifting offer at that point of time makes sense uh, if I'm reaching out to them directly through an email or a WhatsApp or whatever. Uh, but I think fundamentally, uh, I don't think there is, there is one way of doing it. We all uh, need to be cognizant of the fact that we can't spook them uh, and that, you know, ultimately if you want to uh, be intimately engaged with your consumer, you've got to think of it as a relationship where he feels uh, happy about placing his trust in versus just complying with the laws of the land which, uh, you know, require you to do a certain set of actions. So, uh, she's right. I just uh, want to add one thing, give you an example. Uh, you know, uh, I am not sure how many of you have experienced it. But uh, sometimes uh, we are talking about something or we receive an SMS uh, from an organization and suddenly we see a Google ad uh, talking about, you know, uh, the thing which was mentioned mm -hmm. in, in that SMS or the thing which we were talking about. That is bad personalization, uh, even though uh, one of the largest organizations in this world is doing it. But that is something which will spook you uh, because then you will be worried suddenly that who is listening? And why am I seeing this ad? I got an SMS about, uh, let's say, I, I uh, uh, you know, uh, something uh, delivered to my house uh, mm -hmm. from Amazon. But someone is reading that SMS, and uh, you know, the marketer or the product guy decided that okay, let's use uh, the intelligence from these SMSs, which are not sent by us, which are not meant to uh, be read by us. It is uh, between two third parties. Let's try and personalize uh, the ad experience mm -hmm. uh, for this consumer. So this is bad personalization. So I think we are all waiting for the uh, India protection, data protection law. I think a lot of these will be taken care of and will fall in place once uh, that is out and enforced. Right. Any other question that anybody has? Yeah, there, I see a hand there. Thank you so much, everyone. A uh, really insightful session. Uh, my, before, having, before posing the question, my learning here is that personalization is always welcome. But the question is that do, does personalization have something to do with the industry that we are operating in? For instance, Mondelez can do really well, but will people be more cynical about it when they are dealing with personalization coming from Bharat Pay or Paisa Bazaar or Housing.com? Because the nature is like, I come from a BFSI sector. And in BFSI, the moment we want to do personalization at scale, things like regulatory, things like legal, things like finance, compliance, all come up. And then when we want to do personalization at scale, internally the scale means that you get all the teams on board before actually making a mark to the consumer and we lose the bus. Like the topical marketing, the moment marketing, the personalized factor of it just doesn't come through. So 
is it more industry specific and how can we actually uh, enable that be it in BFSI or be it in sectors which are slightly more uh, where people are very very privacy centric or safety centric or how they're handling their data where how can we do personalization there Sachin or Ashish if you want to take that see uh, you are right uh, up to an extent, personalization is industry specific. I'll give you an example. Nobody minds uh, sharing their anniversary date or their birth date, right? And if a gifting companies or, or uh, Mondelez or, or FNP or anyone else, if they are personalizing their communication, their journey, the experience around these occasions, right? Around festivals, around your birthdays, uh, nobody would mind that. But when it comes to the financial information, which I have shared with you, uh, like my salary, or my credit score for that matter. And if you're using that, I'll be, uh, as a consumer, I'll, I'll just, it'll just force me to think, uh, uh, have I shared my uh, information to the right guys? Are they using it? Are they protecting it? Et cetera, et cetera. So, right, uh, it, it depends on what information uh, the consumer is sharing with you and uh, how are you using that information. Thank you. Thanks, Sachin. And thanks a lot. Thanks, audience, for the questions. And thanks once again to all the esteemed panelists here for sharing their uh, insights and learnings on this. Thank you so much.